good feel for the computers until they have more games in them to be able to have a, an opportunity to see where they stand. I, I'll start with my top five at number five, Florida State, a team that continues to get better with Sexton coming in there and their defense as good as you'll find. Miami also would lead at number four. They dropped down after their performance against Louisville last week. Auburn is dominating everybody they have played, every aspect, offense and defense, just blown away with Jason Campbell's ability. I have USC at number two. I know they're coming off their best game against Arizona State, but I think Oklahoma's number one. And the reason I say that, they haven't put their best game together, but when they do, people are going to be changing their polls and putting Oklahoma yeah. up there at one. That could happen. I'm still voting USC number one. You had Auburn number one last week. They yeah, how did that change? How do you look? They had a bad Wednesday practice. No. Wednesday. When they look Wednesday. good Wednesday. All right. I think Auburn is nat nationally underrated. They only have two first place votes in the two polls combined. They've done the it. most, that's for sure. We'll talk more about that coming up. Sir Top Tailback, a suspension and a very shady sounding story in Columbus will fill you in there. And the ink wasn't dry on the first BCS, and the controversy already has begun. The Sooners at three, as you mentioned, the Canes are up to two. Does Utah deserve number seven? We'll talk about it. The ranked team in the country, but can a freshman win it? We'll talk about Adrian Peterson and the Sooners against Kansas when we come back. Peterson, left tackle, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Oklahoma! Two games skid. Uh, in Norman, it's the first meeting of Kansas and coach Mark Mangino against his former boss and racquetball buddy, Bob Stoops. Now, what? stop and visualize Mangino in a racquetball court for a second. Just He's getting Stoops told us last night he would win 10 out of 10 of those games. Yeah. Now, I know Kansas is winless in their last 11 conference road games. I know the Sooners have won 17 straight home games, all by double figures. But KU's defense is improved. It had better be, because here comes old Adrian Peterson. And keep an eye on Peterson today, the freshman. He just needs 99 yards to get to 1,000 rushing yards in the seventh game of his career. He'd be the third guy in history to do that. The other two, Emmett Smith and Marshall Falk. What are happened to those guys? <laughs> They're guys. That's good company. <laughs> ah, that guy's a See great football player. Now, now, is Kansas going to keep things moderately ugly? Yep. Or does he get extremely ugly? My both. At the kickoff, oh. it'll be moderately. At the end, oh, it'll be real go. ugly. Right. Oklahoma has not brought their A game yet, offense, defense, and kick a game to any game this year. Example, last week, Kansas State was ahead of them three times. That's not a good sign. But it's time, sweetheart. Forget about it. Poor old Kansas. Your Oklahoma <laughs> team clobbers them today. Well, it's a matter of time until Oklahoma does put that perfect game together. LC, the old Sunshine Scooter, always says you practice against perfection. That's the challenge for Bob Stoops this week. Not about Kansas, with all due respect. It's about trying to bring out the A game. Jason White, I think, will have a big game today throwing against that Kansas secondary. Sooners big coming big back to Norman. Norman. By the way, have you guys checked the schedule? Do you, do you realize that, that Kansas State is playing Nebraska? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're still my, playing. That's they're my playing. upset special. Yeah. Kansas State hosting Nebraska. No TV. The sign of the times. We'll pick that game a little bit later on. How far wow. off the radar screen is that game? Sad. Going? Wow. Sad. 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 All right. For the national champion, if they go undefeated and don't get a chance to play in the Orange Bowl, unbelievable. And then in the Orange Bowl, how about USC playing Oklahoma? Two teams right now, obviously very good, and everybody would love that matchup, Chris. Very good pick. So I tell you what, I agree in some cases, but obviously disagree. The Rose Bowl, I got the Big Ten champion, Michigan against my at-large team, California. The Fiesta, Oklahoma against, yep, you named it, Utah, and they deserve to go. Sugar Bowl, West Virginia a, against ACC winner, Florida State, which means, aha, uh -huh. all right. Ooh. The Orange Bowl, uh -oh. Uh -oh. the USC Trojans against the Auburn Tigers. And if the Auburn Tigers win the SEC undefeated and you don't put them in the Orange Bowl, I'm telling you something's wrong. USC, Auburn, now that's for today, sweetheart. That's for today. <laughs> if that happens with Auburn, you're going to see the BCS thrown out the window. Let's start with the Rose Bowl. I have Cal as an at-large going up against Michigan yep. as well. Good. In the Fiesta Bowl, I have West Virginia taking on Florida State as my second at-large. Then I agree with Trev and Lee. I have Sugar Bowl, Auburn, and Miami with one, if not both, those teams undefeated. And then I have the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma, and USC. It seems like we agree on those last two. Not the, the top one. Top two. A little yeah. disagreement. Well, I see a lot of seminars all over the logo there on all your bowl picks. That must think is that yeah. they come in here a couple we'll Yeah, see. we'll be here. Thursday oh, we'll be here. Thursday, we'll uh, Thursday night game. Oh, well, you must think you know are going to win. That'd be a good one. Yeah. You've, already, you've already predicted the outcome of that and game. And my North Carolina State has a Miami spoiler. Head, too. North Carolina. That's next on Kiyosara College Football Saturday kickoff. Boomer Sooner. Sooner. Help me out, guys. Now, these Sooner fans have yet to taste defeat either. A perfect 6-0 in the season. A number two rank in a Big 12 championship game in their sights. 
is Big 12 football. The number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners hosting the Kansas Jayhawks. Norman, a pretty tough place to play to say the least. 17 straight home wins for the Crimson and Cream. And attempting to pick apart Mark Van Geno's KU defense. Defending Heisman Trophy winner and Sooner senior QB Jason White coming off a four touchdown day and a tight win over K-State. Like that Crimson and Cream, right? I looked that up. Oh yeah, that right there. The ADT <laughs> National Championship Trophy. The very thing USC and Oklahoma are on a collision course towards. Welcome to Kia Sarah College Football Saturday kickoff alongside the Hall of Famers Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith. I'm Patrick O'Neill sitting in temporarily for Mike Goldberg. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you guys. I picked. I'm gonna shoot you down. Right on from your I love the way you walk. Especially how you talk. Cause when you whisper in my ear and say Johnny I love you. I love that talk. But when you talk that talk. is that it's tailgate time Oklahoma fans channel of Billy Sims coming up with Adrian Peterson time to send it out to both our games first of you take it on Kansas or Big 12 football let's send it to the guys Bill Lamb and Dave Lapo thanks Patrick anytime you visit the University of Oklahoma for football a must stop is the Barry Switzer Center and that means what we might as well call Heisman Hall thanks to Jason White winning the fourth Heisman Trophy in the school's history last winter. White is having another terrific season and his career numbers are bordering on mind-boggling, including 59 career touchdown passes, the best in OU history. But sometimes he's a bit overshadowed by his own teammate, freshman running back Adrian Peterson. With more on him, my partner today, Dave Lapham, at another Heisman site. Thanks a lot, Bill. Well, Adrian Peterson, could he be the fourth running back to win the Heisman at Oklahoma? Billy Sims has done it, Steve Owens has done it, Billy Vessels has done it. Adrian Peterson has a very good chance. Everybody knew about his sprinter speed and acceleration. He is truly a game breaker. But what they're most pleasantly surprised about is how he thrives running the ball between the tackles, getting those tough yards when the game is on the line. 32 carries against Texas, 36 carries against Kansas State. When the game had to be won in the fourth quarter, Adrian Peterson stepped up. So, speed, acceleration, power, toughness. Bill, those are four reasons I think he's going to be a Heisman Trophy finalist. I really believe that. It's going to be fun to watch him. That sets the table for Oklahoma and Kansas. The Heisman hunt goes on, and OU trying to take another step toward what they hope will be another national championship. Now let's take it to Barry Tompkins at number one, USC. Well, Same with Bob Stoops in the, the second-rank Oklahoma Sooners. Who's the better team right now? By the way, Miami is just south of Orlando, for those who didn't know geographically. <laughs> Who's the live? better team? I was forced to do this, I tell you right now. SC, Oklahoma, it's a coin toss, week in, week out. Would you take a look, and if you're forced to choose, I would go offensively with Oklahoma being the better offense, mostly because of their offensive line. Returning people strong, they do a great job. Defensively, it would have to go to SC. Statistically speaking, the number of sacks that they have, the number of turnovers that they force, they get the nod there. Special teams, I go to SC because, again, they're forcing turnovers. They make people scared sometimes. They just drop the ball, B.R. <laughs> sure of course, they've got Reggie Bush. On the coaching side, Pete Carroll, Bob Stoops, I love them both, but it's Norm Chow that gives the nod to that staff for SC. The X Factor. I believe is the most versatile football player in the country, Reggie Bush, in the most versatile offense. They do a great job of finding ways to get him the ball, BR. That's why SC, in my opinion, right now is a better team. Four out of five ca categories. Four out of five. And as I was breaking this down, you know, Kellen, I, I got to tell you that I agree with you uh, along the same lines you were breaking this, this whole matchup down. When you look at the Oklahoma Sooners, the fact they had the 10 returning starters, a great offensive line, the Heisman Trophy quarterback, let me tell you, this is the missing piece right here, Adrian Peterson. He shows up, all of a sudden things fall into place. Defensively, SC, you mentioned the stats. I'm talking about 29 sacks and 18 turnovers for the Trojans. Coaching, let me tell you something, or special teams, excuse me. It's a draw. They've got a better kicker in Oklahoma, Trey DiCarlo. But I got to tell you, Reggie Bush running those kicks back, that evens everything out. The coaching, Oklahoma misses Mike Stu. How do you not miss a guy like this? This kind of fire on the sideline. Oh, man, let me tell you, I love this guy. And in, in tangibles, Oklahoma, it's stuck in their crawl. They didn't get a shot. 
at LSU last year to play for that beautiful trophy, and that's something that, that is still hanging right there. They just, they just can't get over that until they get in that BCS title game. Wait, wait, you, you agree with me? I do. You yes, realize, indeed. though, wow. that we, we have a lot of Oklahoma fans that are, that are watching right now on, they on made television me do it. FS. In that case, I'd like to change oh, all and, of them. And they're not happy. But before we start talking about who's meeting for the national championship, these guys got to win today right here on FSN to keep these hopes alive. First up for Oklahoma is Kansas, coached by former OU assistant Mark Mangino. Then top-ranked USC takes on Washington, careful of a sleep and dog. So keeping to Norman, he was the offensive coordinator there a couple of years. Any chance Bob Stoops throws him a bone for old time's sakes? I think it's going to be Mangino throwing Bob Soup's a curve because I think it's going to be Jason Swanson, the backup quarterback. How soon is he going to go in the game? Adam Barman struggling a little bit. You put in Swanson from San Diego, Lincoln High. Lincoln High School. Mm -hmm. And, and exactly. we'll see how if he can get that offense going against OU. Indeed, you talk about USC versus Washington. The last three teams that SC have faced have come in undefeated. They've left with one loss. Washington comes in with one loss, Patrick. They have a chance to save Keith Gilbertson's job if they upset USC. Okay, that's that is a, certainly is a big if. Uh, a but chance. The, okay, you're, you're a not chance. We gotta give a chance. Gonna All right, this is Billy Ray Smith, Kellen Winslow. Real pleasure for me to be sitting with you guys right there. The ADT National Championship Trophy is in the house. That'll be at the Coliseum later. That'll be at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern, watching USC Washington. But up first, it's Oklahoma hosting KU. Stay tuned for that. You've been watching Kia Sara College Football Saturday kickoff. The Oklahoma Sooners are seeing double. They're ranked second in the nation. They have two bona fide Heisman Trophy candidates in quarterback Jason White and freshman sensation Adrian Peterson. And for the second week in a row, they put their undefeated record on the line against the Kansas squad. Today, the upset-minded Kansas Jayhawks are storming into Norman looking to put a hurt on the Sooners. Kansas at second-ranked Oklahoma. Hitch up that Sooner Schooner, fellas. Let's see if OU can ride it into the national championship. Kickoff is moments away on FSN. It's homecoming at Oklahoma, and it is a tough ticket for the alums coming back to Norman to watch the number two team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. From the campus of the University of Oklahoma in Norman, Kiyosera presents Big 12 football. Today, Kansas meets number two, Oklahoma. Hi everyone, Bill Lamb, Dave Lapham with you. Glad to have you with us here for part one of our one-two weekend. Don't forget later on, number one USC in Washington from Southern Cal. But to this one, Dave, interesting matchup as you take a look at Oklahoma trying to stay unbeaten. Kansas, a vastly improved team at three and three, certainly capable of the upset. Oklahoma, remember, they played for the national title a year ago. I think Bob Stoops feels this team might be better because they're better balanced. Particularly offensively, and when they want to run the football, they get one of the best in the country doing that, averaging over 150 yards a game, fifth in the country. And look at the company that he's keeping here. If he can gain 99 yards today, that'll give him 1,000 yards in seven games. The third true freshman to do so. Emmett Smith only leads the NFL in all-time rushing. Marshall Falk, pretty strong. Two weeks ago against Texas, they couldn't throw the football very well. He carried it 32 times for 225 yards, took control of the football game. The good news is when the running game is shut down, like Kansas State put eight in the box, they go to Jason White. Jason White won the Heisman. So what did he do against Kansas State? He goes 20 of 31 for 256 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Sometimes you have to run it to win. Sometimes you have to throw it to win. Oklahoma can do both. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Adrian Peterson, peanut butter, Jason White, jelly. They're good each other. They're better together. <laughs> Figure you'd make a food reference, yeah. big fella. All right, Kansas defense certainly got a challenge, but offensively there's some questions as well. Jim Knox with more down on the sideline. All right, Bill, right behind me, Adam Barman, number seven, Jason Swanson, number eight, both warming up for Kansas because both quarterbacks will play. Now, Barman will get the start. Jason Swanson will come in. A couple weeks ago, you may recall, Jason Swanson came off the bench, tossed the game-winning touchdown pass against Kansas State. I talked to both quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks said they are ready to go and looking forward to the challenge against a very tough Oklahoma defense. That's right. Coming up next, when we return, we'll join Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith in our college football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Sarah on FSN.
Titans coming in. Number one, USC trying to take care of business against the hapless Huskies. It wasn't all about Adrian Peterson. He might be your leading Heisman candidate, but guess who showed up for the Sooners? La Homa taking on Kansas. Bob Stoops across the field from his buddy Mark Mangino and his former assistant, Jason White. Up top to Travis Wilson. White threw for 265 in the first half because Kansas was geared up to stop Adrian Peterson. And White just kept the boot to the throat looking for Brandon Jones this time. Brandon Jones here, guys. If you're going to play man, actually a safety there. Get him over the top right there. You get the passing game going. What does that do? Early in this game, Adrian Peterson didn't do anything. They couldn't get the running game going. You get the passing game going. Then all of a sudden, you can open this right here. The power down by the goal line. Adrian Peterson in for the touchdown. That is his seventh touchdown of the year. Fourth quarter, Oklahoma driving. Peterson with a routine four-yard carry that's anything but routine. He had 1,000 yards yards for the season busted a hundred in every game this year we'll tell you the significance of that in just a minute here is white again with his fourth touchdown pass of the game white second straight four touchdown game first 300 yard game of the season 41 10 oklahoma stuck a touchdown in late in this game and stoops has said because of the bcs system now you want to make sure that the pollsters are impressed. Peterson, meanwhile, becomes the third player in 1A history to rush for 1,000 yards in the first seven games of his freshman season. That is pretty good company he's keeping there with Marshall Falk and Emmett Smith. Auburn, a very similar score. To a chance these have a difficult schedule. Those two impressed me the most. I think the team you left out, Oklahoma. Let's not forget they still have the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Jason White. No one wants hey, to talk about him. Yeah, this year too, yeah Adrian freshman. Peterson. But, yeah. you know, this is a team that's really starting to come together. You look at the way that if they put Aitman in the box to stop Adrian Peterson, Jason White's back there. He can throw the ball around the field to Mark Clayton, make big plays downfield, and now the offense is finally coming alive in the passing game. Over 200 yards in the first half in this game. So if you try to stop one, pick your poison because the other one's reigning to beat you. And if you look at this offense right now, they're hitting on all cylinders. I think each and every week they get a little bit better, a little bit better, and they're coming to the top at the right time towards the end of the season. Defense looked a little saltier in the game against Kansas, too. Kansas State moved the ball on them, yeah. except for one bust or one gamble that went awry in a long touchdown pass for the Jayhawks. They didn't get much of anything against that Sooner defense on Saturday afternoon. Oklahoma's been in the poll for quite some time. And some new faces making their way into the rankings, including Notre Dame. Unbelievable. The one unfolding in Starkville as Sylvester Croom gets his first SEC win for Mississippi State against Florida. Snaps a nine-game SEC losing streak for the Dogs. Adrian Peterson bust 1,000 yards, just the third freshman to bust 1,000 in his first seven games. Mike Hart of Michigan, his second straight 200-yard game. Wolverines have found themselves a freshman running back. Michigan and Wisconsin still undefeated in the Big Ten. They will not play this season. Sconson holds the tiebreaker. SC, Oklahoma, Miami, Auburn all atop the pole, all rolling and rolling big. You guys follow us in college football on Saturday. You know that I am firmly against going for two until the fourth quarter when you need it. So it's okay to go for two now. We got Mark and Trev over there. Guys, <laughs> want to know your biggest surprise, your biggest disappointment on the day. Trev, let's start with you with your biggest surprise. Actually, Reese and Mark, my biggest surprise is a team that lost. Deep in the end, they didn't think Hester was going to run it out of there, you know? 4 2 5 40, That's all I got to say. Hey, guess what I got in my hand? Oh, yeah. Well, BCS projections. Oh, second very nice. one. <laughs> second week of the BCS projections. These brought to you by Allstate. Brad Edwards, our BCS guru, assuring us that USC will still be on top at Miami, perhaps somewhat surprisingly will be ahead of Oklahoma. Auburn sitting there in fourth, Florida State and Wisconsin will round out the top six. All right, now, what do you think? Let's look at this. If this is the way it shakes out, I know that during this weekend, you've come to the belief that Auburn should be number one in the polls. Again, guys, I think that Auburn should be number one in the polls based on their body of work for the whole season, who they've played. It's be the reason why they're number four in the BCS rankings is because where they started. They haven't gotten high enough in both polls, and obviously two-thirds of the BCS is the coaches' poll mm -hmm. and, of course, the AP poll. What do you think, Mark? Well, I think that uh, Utah's not up there anymore, and I think that <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the schedule. It's a respect the strength of schedule, but I still like USC number one. I think right now they just have an on-off switch with Pete Carroll with his football team. If they're behind by halftime, flick it goes on, and they just rev it up, and they come out, and they just beat you in the second half. Here's the thing to watch from the standpoint of Utah. Utah's still unbeaten, but now some of the one-loss teams. You wonder where Michigan mm -hmm. will be ranked in relation to yeah. Utah. Will some of the pollsters start to move the Wolverines ahead of the Utes as they finish their schedule, which is not necessarily the strongest down the stretch, could 
potentially hurt Utah's opportunity to make it into the And BCS. I told you there's going to be five undefeated teams. We'll keep so I'm not on, even on that list. Hey, let's hand out some helmet stickers. Maybe get First started. one goes to the Tennessee Volunteer Safety. Jason Allen. Jason Allen. 15 tackles, 10 solo tackles in the victory over Alabama. Former Muscle Shoals Trojan, by the way. Okay. How about David Pollock, guys? I got to go all defense here. Another huge strip. What is it with David Pollock and stripping quarterbacks, stripping Mac Jones, holding Arkansas to under 300 yards of total offense? Well, we're going to stay in the SEC then. I'm going to go Mississippi State and Jarius Norwood, the running back with 174 yards, the game-winning touchdown, and the dogs upset of Florida. I'm going to a little Pac-10 love. Andrew Walter, six touchdown passes the sixth time in his career. He's thrown for over 400 yards. Pac-10 love. I can't believe it. I'm giving a helmet sticker to Oregon's defense. How about I never the Ducks? thought I never thought I'd give it to the Ducks defense. How about this? Ten sacks in the game, holding Stanford to minus eight yards rushing. An excellent effort by that defense. And Paul Peterson from Boston College threw for 383 yards in the victory over Notre Dame. 297 of those yards coming in Where's the second Where's a cane? Half. He's got to have a cane. I got to go. Brock This was a late addition to the helmet stickers. Brock Berlin with five touchdown passes for Miami. He too gets a helmet sticker. Just about to wrap up October now. One more week in this month before we hit that home stretch of November when you drive for conference championships. Magnificent Seven still sitting there. We'll see how they fare coming up. For Mark May and Trev Alberts, I'm Reese Davis. We'll see you next week.